Diablo 4's opening cinematic famously shows three misguided Tomb Raiders being sacrificed to bring back the mother of man, Lilith, from the void. But why was she sent to the dark dimension between worlds to languish in the first place? And perhaps more importantly, did she deserve her fate? To ask and answer these questions and more, we must first explore the demon Lilith and the angel Inarius' conflict on Sanctuary, set millennia before the events of Diablo IV, known as the Sin War. Post the unholy union of Lilith and Inarius after they absconded with the Worldstone and created their Sanctuary from the eternal conflict between Heaven and Hell. A fear began to creep over the heads of angels and demons alike like a pall. That fear was the ever-growing power of their offspring, the firstborn of humanity, known as the Nephilim. Inarius called for a time to reflect as his angelic and demonic kin both voted to destroy humanity lest they face the wrath of heaven and hell themselves. However, Lilith, believing her new children were the key to her victory in the eternal conflict, slaughtered all of those who deemed her children a threat, much to Inarius's horror. However, the angel had sworn to never harm his one-time lover, and thus, instead of killing her, banished her to the black nothingness of the void. However, this is far from where Lilith's story and the conflict between the two ends. When the Burning Hells were finally made aware of Sanctuary, they set about cementing their foothold in the world of man by forming the Temple of the Triune to counter the angel Inarius' own Cathedral of Light. Blinded by their back and forth efforts to win over the people of Sanctuary, Lilith surreptitiously crept back into the world from the void, ages later since the first Nephilim were born, laying down her grand scheme to retake her children as personal weapons and fulfill her ambitions to end the eternal conflict, which was now on her doorstep. Inarius had taken the artifact that created Sanctuary and finished the Firstborn's powers. No longer were the Nephilim powers to be reckoned with, but instead, the future generation's potential lay dormant. Lilith would begin in Serum in southern Kejan, weaving her influences over a farmer named Uldisian Uldiomed, a man disenchanted with the other factions of the world after the loss of his family, survived only by himself and his brother. Lilith manipulated the brothers and two of their friends, leading to the destruction of their town and forcing them to leave. But other forces were now aware of her activities and the temple and cathedral both set their eyes upon the trail of the travelers. Four sets of eyes now rested upon the group. Yes, four. Lilith, the temple, the cathedral, and a fourth that waited in the shadows, unknown, but nonetheless whispered to the youngest brother Mandelm. Though they may try, the Triune were unsuccessful in their attempts to subdue the travelers, acting first and most openly pursuing the group to Partha, another small nearby town. Here, Lilith would set Uldisian on the path to reawakening the long-dormant powers of the Nephilim. Here, the Temple of the Triune would attempt to slay the Travelers, though ultimately fail in the face of the growing might of Uldisian, the intervention of their shadowy benefactors, and the wrath of Lilith. Realizing he posed a true danger to his friends, Uldisian fleed on his own, where he would encounter Lilith in a human form, known as Lilia, though it soon revealed that she is in fact the daughter of hatred as the Triune's true aim is realized. Uldisian escapes the Temptress's clutches and disappears into the jungles, but is soon joined by his friends and the Parthens he began to awaken, and is confronted by the Triune's leader, Lucian, the Primus, brother of Lilith and son of Mephisto, Lord of Hatred. After a grueling fight with Lucian, resulting in a multitude of casualties, Uldisian finally bested the foul fiend by willing him to not exist, saying, You are nothing, until it was so. And he was wiped from existence, as the true power of the Nephilim is understood, as the power of self-actualization. 
Lilith, seeing the opportunity to continue her work, seized control of the Triune, now disguising herself as Lucian, and continued to guide travellers who, like a hurricane, moved across the southern regions of Kedjan, decimating Triune outposts and converting others to their cause, calling themselves the Edirum, or those who have seen, moving towards the centre of the Triune's operations. It's in this conquest the Shadow Benefactors now make themselves known. Dragul and Rathmar appear to the brothers, first Mandeln, and then eventually Uldissian. While Tragul worked with Mandeln to teach and hone his powers of necromancy, Rathmar would see Uldissian to Mount Ariat, encounter Bull Cathos along the way to the Worldstone, where Uldissian would attune to the artifact to allow his own power to once more grow exponentially. After Lilith failed to stem the crusade of these Edirum, a battle ensued. Within the surrounding jungle of the Temple of the Triune's core station, Lilith and Dildissian would lock in combat within the temple's walls, while Mendeln decimated the temple's undead armies of Morlu and resurrected Fallen. At the culmination of the battle, Lilith was defeated, and Dildissian is whisked to safety by Tragul rejoining the Edirum. Inarius finds Lilith sneaking away with what life she has left and banishes her to the void once more. Now rid of the Triune, Uldissian leads his Edirum against Inarius' Cathedral of Light. But first, he must pass through land controlled by the great mage clans, and so he leaves to convene with their ruling council. However, unseen fully, more threats loom beyond Inarius. Tyriel, the Archangel of Justice, reveals himself through the archer Achilleos, Uldissian's friend, who was slain in the battle with Lucian, and now an undead agent of Rathma and a manipulated pawn of Tyriel's. This troubling revelation signals to the dragon Tragul that the High Heavens now seek to descend upon Sanctuary which could mean utter destruction of the planet. To make matters worse, Diablo, the Lord of Terror, comes to Sanctuary to snuff out the threat of Aldisian himself, revealing a pact made with Inarius at the start of their Cold War. While Tragul deals with the threat of heaven, Aldisian encounters Diablo whilst dealing with the mage clans and turns his own power of terror against him, sending Diablo screaming back to the Burning Hells. Now assured of his power, Uldissian moves his Edirum against Inarius and his cathedral at the Battle of the Golden Path, but the dragon Tragul was forced to expand his energy to free Rathma from the Void, cast there by Inarius when he went to implore his father for aid in keeping the High Heavens at bay. And thus, Heaven and Hell met in combat upon Sanctuary, but were met with resistance from the Edirum and the Firstborn, Rathma. Bulkathos, and an unnamed female warrior. After defeating Inarius in single combat, Uldissian unleashes his great energy, sending the armies of the High Heavens and Burning Hells back to their home planes. But his power was now too much for Sanctuary to even handle, as the world began to fracture from his mere presence. In a great flash of light, Uldissian gave his energy to reality himself, joining his essence with the Worldstone and all in creation at the cost of his own life. And just when things began to calm, the Angiris Council met in full view of the adventurers and voted upon the fate of Sanctuary. In a three-to-one vote with Malthiel, the Archangel of Wisdom, abstaining, Sanctuary was spared and Mephisto appeared to garner a deal to allow Sanctuary to exist in peace, at the price of taking Inarius as a prize. The world would also have its memory altered to forget the events of the Sin War and go about their lives in peace, save for the machinations of their own devices. All except Mendeln, his memory safeguarded by Tragul and Rathma. The youngest of the brothers, the last son, would go on to record the events of the Sin War in his teachings as the founder of the Priests of Rathma, known as Kalan, the Teacher, the last of the Edirim, and witness to the Sin War. Now there's much more to the story than what I recanted here, and to cover every detail would take much longer than what has already come to pass, so I urge everyone to read the Sin War Trilogy and get the full story 
or pop by Tales Channel, who wrote this lovely video, and hear his audiobook work on the series, as this trilogy is truly the best primer for Diablo 4, as it almost picks up right where the book leaves off and feels to follow the events themselves like history repeating in the never-ending Sin War for Sanctuary Soul.